uh, School of Business Management and we are located in India. And we have our MBA students, uh, some of our MBA students with us today here to discuss with you, talk to you about HR practices, where they have learned a course called Human Resource Management during this semester. And some of them have taken as their specialization in their second year studies. So this initiative is to get the practices from India as well as from abroad, from different parts of the world, how the HR functions is being practiced for them to get exposed. And when they get into the corporate world, they can they will be able to perform well and they will have some competency towards human resource management. So that's the reason we are meeting over here. And thank you so much, uh, Ms. Sissi Reid, for your time and your um, share, valuable sharing going to be. On behalf of our management and uh, students, we welcome you for this wonderful International HR Meet 2023 on this auspicious day. I am Sundar Nadrajan, the professor and director of Aditya School of Business Management and also the faculty of human resource subject course. So I would like to learn also from you, the practices, you know, maybe from you, the past experience. You have worked in London and you are in UA United Arabs and you are in Central Asia and you are such a versatile personality. I read your profile, a great honor for us and um, having you here and meeting you today. And thank you so much and uh, would like to start with a welcome note by one of our students. Then you can start sharing about your background, where you started and how you established your career. Then from there, we can go for some discussions further. Is that fine with you? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Thank you so fine. much. Yeah, let's start now with a welcome note. A warm welcome, ma'am. So I'm extremely profound to express my sincere welcome on behalf of my team members and my institution of Aditya School of Business Management. I welcome you our esteemed face of simplicity, Ms. C.C. Rick, HR professional with UAE experience. Welcome, ma'am, and also thank you for your valuable time for us. Now I welcome our director and mentor of ASBM, Dr. N. Chandrapanian, sir, for to this session. And I thank you, sir, for giving us a chance to conduct the international HR meet. I am sure that this session has helped us to insight choosing our HR field. Once again, welcome you all. Thank you. Yes, so now it's to you, Ms. C.C., right? So maybe you can start with sharing your background and where, how you started your career and what the inspiration you got into the HR field. Maybe that will help our students to start over their career. Well, um, first of all, um, thank you very much, everyone, for having me uh, in your meeting. Um, I'm very honoured and uh, I'm so happy to, to share the knowledge and experience that I have uh, in my past and about to have soon. Um, uh, I just want to warn uh, before we start that I have my little one at home today. And if you will see some noise or screaming, shouting or dinosaur stuff, so that is my little boy at the back. Um, uh, well, um, well I, I'll i start to introduce myself as an, um, I'm a CC, uh, I'm originally from Kyrgyz Republic and um, I born and raised up here. I've started, um, my first degree was as an English interpreter and my second one, I'm obviously politician, I mean, work politics, international relationships. And uh, my third one is an HR, HR professional uh, management. Um, my career was, um, I had a really long journey to get to an HR. I've started working in different areas but like retail, hospitality, um, sales, fashion, um, hotel industry, restaurant. So I've tried myself in so many um, fields just to, to see what I can be fit um, in terms of uh, being uh, the right person in the right place. And um, I lived in Dubai for about 10 years. Um, and the most what I've experienced HR is in Dubai, to be honest. 
and uh, um, it helped me a lot because Dubai was my first place for internationally where I um, I met so many people, uh, so many nationalities. Uh, I got to know uh, many different cultures, and that really helped me to um, to get to know more about myself, firstly, and secondly, about um, other cultures, other system, how the world is cooperating, how the world is living, um, and uh, how the system is working around the world. And um, being as an HR person, it was so many, uh, there were so many challenges, and it will be, uh, because um, in my experience, being a HR, it's about uh, being very confident and um, knowing what's fair is about and uh, about learning. Keep learning, keep training. It's never ending and uh, uh, unstoppable um, career, I can say. Um, I've been attending so many trainings and um, uh, worked for about three companies as an HR person, where end up I've experienced about uh, B2B and business development. Uh, that helped me to open more skills um, and uh, uh, to work more um, more hard uh, on my on my career, uh, on my field, on my on my specialty itself. And um, uh, but the main thing, what I can say, working as an HR, you um, you get the sense. I mean, you improve your sense of knowing people and uh, you're right in the middle. Um, I don't know how is in India uh, the HR system works. I don't know how the HR system works in Central Asia, to be honest. I never experienced that. And, uh, but I can say worldwide, um, HR is about balancing, uh, balancing the business itself and um, just to be in the middle, like a bridge between employee and employers. Uh, between directors and management, between um, salespeople and um, marketing people. It's just obviously um, try to be a bridge between everyone. Plus as well, it's, um, looking at, it's about also looking after having a big responsibility, looking after um, not only people, but business itself, looking after financial part, looking after uh, marketing uh, part as well. And um, that a bit... Um, uh, help to 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 get more strength to to know how to um, cooperate with one another, and um, as as I as I know back in the day HR it never used to be um, that main part of um, department uh, for people. Uh, mostly it was about okay, you're hiring, uh, you're firing, um, you're paying. Um, salary and that's it pretty much and uh, mostly HR had no voice that time because they couldn't understand what exactly HR is about and what they have to do and all I can say HR for example in Dubai experience right um, all the responsibilities that HR has to do it was really really important especially when it comes to the documents for the visa uh, I mean we hire people and we um, we create some documents, we create some um, offer letters, um, contracts, and of course, it's very important to know um, the law of the country because being as an HR internationally, you have to know the law uh, because you're going to work very tight with those people when it comes to make uh, make a visa for your employees and uh, um, draft a contract and get. Um, legal contract as well and work um, recording those contracts try not to break them and try not to be selfishly using other employees that you're taking abroad and put them in a um, uncomfortable situation um, so so are the company not to be in an uncomfortable situation as well uh, because in Dubai obviously if you uh, break the contract you don't do something um, um, right uh, in a in in let's say in a visa way and uh, in payment way you get the fines from the government and it's not it's not like chicken money the fines right and that goes to the company which it comes straight to HR being negligent for those things so 
we had to make sure that we won't miss anything, especially the law in Dubai, it changes every year. So for example, in other countries, we have one rule, uh, one thing until the president will not change or prime minister won't change. You have pretty much everything the same for years. When it's Dubai, it's not like that. It's every year something changes, every year, every year. And you, um, I have to be very on my toes uh, not to miss anything because if you miss any law, if you miss any changes, you're going to have a trouble because there might be changing about the visa of the employee it might be changing about the contract and god forbid you miss that again you're going to have fines and you're going to put in other people in trouble and you're going to put your company in trouble as well so there are so many details that i've learned to be honest and it was very interesting challenging at the same time uh but um uh because of the team that hr creates around themselves helps a lot to work um, to work in the right way, um, to, to be more disciplined and to be more organized. So this is also in HR hands to make sure that you have a good assistance, um, you make sure that everything is organized and uh, you have a full of um, calendar, schedule of the calendar about the employees ending contract or ending the passport or about the promotion, about the um, salaries, about everything. And uh, um, having a big uh, department, for example, if you work in a big company, you're going to have um, more than five people in, in your company who does many things because HR, uh, it's not only about the one person, about one department. HR have a different um, um, different roads, like to say HR, uh, um, specialist, HR um, recruiter, HR generalist, HR um, professional, um, um, visionable, strate strategic person. Uh, it's just so many things. And uh, being as a head of HR, my last, uh, on my last experience, um, it was quite large. And uh, we had so many departments and people that um, I had to just work with them um, day by day, very tight and a close um, distance to make sure that everything goes uh, right. Because if a HR recruiter limps, let's say, that means the whole team's going to limp. And that was really important for me to make sure that all the departments work equally in, and every everyone does their own task. Um, so what trainings, like, again, is on HR to make sure you to have trainings for your employees because if you have a company and you have an HR and you're hiring a people and as a human being we all live learn we all experience no matter what it doesn't matter how many years I do have an experience I still um, get to learn more and I will and uh, even continuously um, let's say five years from now is going to be it's going to be a big difference for me to understand about HR again because the world changes, the system changes, um, everything changes, and you have to really um, catch up with every um, step um, of the of the career that you're doing at the moment and um, uh, create changes, um, um, embrace changes, and also to train your employees about those changes. So, so they can take in the right way as well. Because misleading from the HR, uh, it gives a lot of, um, it affects a lot for the company and for the employees as well. So the trainings are very, very important. Every, I don't know, six, seven months, uh, give the training for sales department. Every six, seven months, give the training to marketing department and to um i'm not touching the finances but uh finances it comes to train when it comes where the technology changes that that that's it because um obviously they work always on um in a, in a computer and whatever it changes is very important for them to grow in that way uh, but other departments physically it's very important for them to provide those trainings so when your employees grows that means your business will grow because all the profits and um, everything comes from the employee. Company doesn't grow by themselves. They grow by people and by people that 
worked it four years. I think that wasn't long and more understanding for everyone. Yeah, that's really wonderful, uh, CC. You have given from the beginning till, till today how you have uh, gone through your phases, different phases. Especially you worked in uh, the retail, B2B, business development, not only into the HR, and you understood thoroughly the business process in general, and also heading from the recruitment to payroll management, grievances handling, and as a HR generalist, you have to coordinate and work with everybody for the development of an organization, right? That is really wonderful. Uh, sharing by yourself. Really, really happy learning this morning. The first thing you emphasized on learning and development. You know, that's, that's so much to look at, right? Learning and development of people in an organization and balancing between the employer and employees towards meeting that organizational objectives and goals. Yeah, I just wanted to sum up that what, what you have just expressed. I think you have brought in everything in like in five, 10 minutes, you know, for our, for our <laughs> learning. <laughs> yeah, it's, see, it's about the speech as well. Uh, for the HR person, uh, like for the beginners who uh, really wants to be in HR, who have a passion to help people, not to say, okay, um, I found 80% people are um, going as an HR person, uh, they think a bit selfish about thinking, okay, I'm an HR, um, I'm going to be uh, the head of this company, uh, which everyone's going to be depend on me. And whatever I say, they have to just look at me thinking, um, am I good on their side or not? But it's not about that. It's very um, wrong information that it take people thinking about that. But being HR it means originally serving people. That's what I've understood uh, through my whole entire career life because I've been working as a PA as well. PA, I can say, uh, and a PA, but I was working as a PA in my country, but it was a long time ago. And uh, But I've learned one of the things that it, it's not far from HR, to be honest. And uh, that means HR, it's about serving. You serve people. You serve so employee, people. you yeah. serve you serve management, you serve the director, you are the bridge, you are the bridge and you help, you help people, you discipline them. Uh, if you disorganize, upset minded person, you're going to mess up everything at first. And the main, the important part, you're going to mislead the people. And it's not, it's not good, especially if you have a freshener and uh, that person is trying to get some experience, which will affect for that person for whole entire his life, to continue his career, you got for bit to mislead a little bit, then the person is is gonna have a hard time, especially when the person will move from one to another company or one to another country, and that gonna make so much difference in his character as well. Because as an HR professional, HR professional, you also build up your character. Like you can understand, you're a professor, you know very well what HR is about. You've been probably having so many trainings, studying, searching, and um, um, experience working. So you quite understand it's about the personality of the person as well. You have to be very organized. You have to be very um, disciplined and uh, responsible of your job. And no matter what, um, you, you, you have to make sure that you have the right people. But how do you know? they're the right people means you have to build them up in a team. This is the main thing to work in a team as an HR because the root comes from you. Yeah, so I put them all together from the beginning to the end as an introduction about myself, about my career, uh, but then also to understand in all to say, okay, HR professional, what do they do from A to Z? Okay, they start from here, they do this here, and there are more to do for them so yeah you've noticed quite well yeah so that's another side of um, a personality what we are talking about being responsible disciplined systematic and organized characteristics what you are presenting yourself as being a hr how you practiced in your organization basically it's your brand in private and in public in your organization you maintain the same repo with people 
whether you're in your organization or outside your organization, you are, you are. Right? So Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. There is no changes like that's even something, if you have the roots. Yeah, outstanding to bring out the culture. You are the role model of your organizational culture and development. And you set as an example being a you know, supporter or, or servant leader. You serve people. And uh, as also as a leader, you are the leader for the organization, right? So the other side, soft Absolutely. skills. Yeah, soft skills you are talking about. You mentioned earlier about the functions of HRM in the initial discussion. Now you are talking about the soft skills and characteristics and um, tacit knowledge a HR should possess, that implicit knowledge a HR should possess, something which was brought in in your second round discussions was really a good insights for us, CC. Thank you. Let, My pleasure. My yeah. pleasure. I hope we get it right. You know, so I'm just putting it in nutshell so that they can understand for in the in the in the capsule form what is the hard skill and soft skills of a human resource manager or or a head of human resource should have. Not only just looking oh, yeah. at only the functions and also the soft skills they should possess. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I just put it all in one just to understand the major about uh, the idea about the uh, about the responsibilities and things that you do. Um, but if you sit down and talk about it really in details, there are so many things you can do. Like not in not in all in one day. It, it will take a couple of three days, so maybe a week. It depends. But there are so many. Um, it, it's it's like a tree, and there are so many leaves taken to sit down and discuss about each of them. Yeah, that's really wonderful. So can we get some questions from our students? Uh, maybe we'll discuss some from them. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure, yeah. We have something to ask. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Um, myself, Ismaya. Hi. Um, ma'am, I'm audible. Uh, hi, ma'am. Uh, can you provide an overview of the company's organization structure? And how different departments interact with each other? So I mean, in the department, collaboration and communication, how it should happen in a, in a typical organization, international organization, she would like to learn. Um, you, mean, you mean the how the different departments work? Uh, yeah, collaborate between the, with each other. The, connection, okay. the connection between line managers and staff managers. Yeah. OK, I get it. All right, internationally, I'll tell you. Um, when you have a different department, right? Let's say sales department, marketing department, financial department, uh, logistic department, um, um, and between managers, operation manager, brand manager, um, uh, assistant manager, there are so many uh, people uh, in a company. How they collaborate? It depends of uh, the company itself. I mean, what company does? If it's retail, let's say, yeah, it's about fashion. Uh, let's talk about a fashion. Um, in a fashion, it's pretty much uh, big. Um, it's a large. Um, um, it's a large market. So you have you will start to have from uh, let's say uh, a sell person, not seller. Um, let's say how can I uh, give an example? Okay, let's say um, fashion consultant, sales representative, and. Um, um, clerk boy, which means stock boy, yeah, who responsible for the stock, um, supervisors and uh, managers, assistant managers, and then um, a brand manager, operation manager, um, where else, a, man, a marketing department, all of them are work quite tight. Um, why is that? Because, for example, uh, we I worked in a, uh, we had a, a a brand in Dubai Mall. Um, it had fifty-four brands like Ted Baker, Baber, uh, B, uh, B, B, G, B, G, B, something like that. Uh, Nike, um, Adidas, Reebok. It was lots of brands. So all the people how they collaborate. Um, whenever you get um, new stock, for example, logistics. Yeah, you have to make sure those people are communicate with. Um, with office uh, manager people all right you got the stock you report to them you report to financial part as well so that means you have um let's say email 
that you have to send it to financial, HR, and the um, and logistics. So three of them have to know. Okay, what did we get? Okay, pair of t-shirts, the same like thousands of them, uh, boots or whatever. And then after that, it gets to transfer to another department that they have to very um tightly communicate with each other, which means uh, which means um a director, for example managers sales managers and uh, marketing managers and the director they will communicate it, it all goes through email not nowadays it's very easy all through the email all right you, you just send an email cc to this 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 and then everyone gets the same uh, information um, the main part the information has to be very correct and it has to be same especially for the financial part because they're the one who's going to count how much they spend and how much profits they're going to get right and um, so after um, so, um, getting the, the other department as a director, um, sales and marketing department, um, it's very important for them to collaborate because marketing, what they do, they're going to um, advertise them. They're going um, to they're gonna let people know what's new, right? Uh, what's coming soon that you can go to the mall and grab them or whatever. It's, it's a big department as well. And then sales. Um, go through the financial uh, um, department of course you you put the prices the, the prices works in, inside and then sales people will take over after that and then it goes to the merchant merchandise department as well which means it, it, it's a bigger department you have more people in the merchandise as well and then after that it goes to actual physical people um in inside the inside the um in, um sorry, um, uh, inside the mall, who people physically work to the management and then management uh, collaborates with salespeople to say, okay, we got this to the stock person. Okay, we receive this much, put it in the stock, this much, take it out. And then you uh, collaborate with salespeople, what, what they're gonna sell. So it's like a chain. You start from here to there and it's, it's not depends really on HR that part to be honest because you have a management department who that like a sales manager, um, a marketing manager, director, everyone are sitting and taking care of it and then spreading to other people and to other departments to make sure it delivers equally and well. And the, but HR have to make sure that um, everyone um everyone um um not missing any information so everyone are working in the same in the same level i mean getting the information that is that is it but there is not much involved for the hr in that in that particular part only if something happens at the meeting and um, they have bigger things to discuss of course then they will include hr and uh, and it, it also depends who type of HR you are. I mean, if you HR assistant, if you HR recruiter, it's nothing to do with you, to be honest. But if the general um, or head of HR, that, that means they will include for all the process that's going on in a, uh, in a company. So I really hope that I answered the questions, if that makes, if it all makes sense. If you, um, if I missed something or you didn't get um, some of the stuff, uh, don't hesitate, just feel free, ask me again, and I will explain in a different way. Thank you. So that's a detailed uh, input for uh, for the learning, yeah? This is a very detailed input. Thank you so much. Let's go to the next uh, question. Hi, ma'am. This is Akash Nikshan. What are the main sources of recruitment in your account? Can you repeat your question again, please? What are the main sources of recruitment in your company? So the sources of recruitment you have handled okay. in the past, maybe internally or externally, or you would have handled yes. with the, some outsourcing members. Yeah, those. Well, it, okay. Um, well, it depends. Again, it's about the company. Um, what your company will provide you with. Sometimes you can fight with them to say, okay, let's have this couple of agencies work together, uh, work with them together. We will pay some, you know, um, let's say annually this much, um, X amount of um, cash, and they're going to provide for us 
um, whoever we're going to hire it. So it, it's um, kind of makes easy for the recruiter to go through all the, um, all the process. Uh, some companies, they don't want to spend and they say, okay, go yourself. So that means you have to tidally work um, with LinkedIn uh, physically, yeah? LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Now it's just a lot of um, channels uh, that you can work with by yourself without paying. Uh, but in my experience, um, I can say that it's actually also important to work with recruiting companies. Like, um, for example, in Dubai, we had Indeed, which we used to hire through them. Indeed, it calls another one, the Bizzle. And uh, one of the biggest one was Bayat. Bayat, uh, they, used to, uh, they used to ask for the payment, the annual payment or quarterly, uh, but um, it's, it's, it's for work. I mean, you pay for them, and they will do half of your job for you in order to get some good um, employees. And those clients, it's very good for the B2B as well. They used to find a good clients. So it, it depends on the company, to be honest. It really does. Because physically, for example, if you try to do by yourself, you will do that job. But it's going to be super, super hard. And it's going to take a bit longer time. When it's a recruited company, they already have a basic basis they already have lots of information uh they have lots of data and they have more options for you to offer and i don't think i can't say they take a lot for the service um but it's quite reasonable for them to pay and uh, um to get like qualified uh, good people from them that's good any other questions? Hello, ma'am. Hi. Myself, Hari Vikram. Proceed, proceed with your question. Yes, ma'am. So what kind of employee perks and benefits do you think it is necessary to keep an keep employee engaged and motivated? Um, it's a good question. Very good question. Um, in order for you to make sure that your employees are happy and uh, you want them to stay in the company because you see the values and the abilities of the person who are um, very qualified, have a strong skills and uh, will help your company to grow, what, is, what you have to do is provide more training. To make sure that and those trainings has to be paid by the company and some company does like that okay i'm gonna give you a training you're gonna get the certificate and 50 50 all right i'm gonna pay you all of it but from your salary i'm gonna deduct 50 percent because it's not only for me it's for you some does but there's some strong really good companies they do it's fine we're gonna pay for your trainings we're gonna pay for this just learn because we want you to grow the more you grow you're gonna help us to grow more and the first motivation is to, to provide a good, strong training for them. And the secondly, um, to um, um, every every year to, to, to give some gifts for them. I mean, we say like a bonus, yeah, end of the year, when the year is finished, before the Christmas or before the New Year Eve, um, just present them with some uh, bonus to say, for example, if you have a 1,000, uh, uh, salary dirham let's say yeah um you just add three three hundred four hundred on top of it and say this is your bonus for a year that you you achieved this much so we decided to thank you for this much and then person will start to get more motivated because if the person works for five six seven years you will you will you will just more appreciative and you will just um to add more and more bonus on the achievement and they will understand oh i am appreciated in this company yeah they can see my values let me be better and you will not even um understand how they get better in the, in in their fields in their responsibilities and when they get better that means they're gonna help you a lot that you won't regret um allocating some cash or providing some trainings for them because you're having more profits from them. Yeah, training bonus. And just to say thank you as an 
you know, birthday. Like we used to in the office to say, oh, this is like on the system it comes up. Oh, this is this is person's birthday. Yeah, what we do is uh, before the person comes to work, we just put stickers on the computer to say happy birthday and some silly stuff like li- really funny silly stuff, the faces or cards to say we remember about you. Thank you for being a good employee and we wish you all the best. And then, you know, the team inside, they can get sick or whatever. But for us, it's very it, it always important to encourage people to say, you're not forgotten. I know you. Yes, we have more than 100 people here, but I still know each of you because each of you is very important in this company. That's it. So to engage employees, rewards and recognition is something very important. Yeah. Even small things, even people who are whatever age group they belong to, but uh, little appreciations keeps them motivated and engaged. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. If you if you were faced with an employee grievance that required your immediate attention, what would be your process for investigating and resolving the situation? I mean, a case which you have handled on grievances, if you can share, will be a good learning for our students. Um, in what, uh, in what point? Any, what any, any, point? any circumstances, grievance handling, you know, grievances, grievances. Yeah. Okay. If you have okay. any cases in the past, you have, you have handled maybe one case study for us, for our understanding. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I understand now. Well, um, being as an HR, well, I, I can't say I had many years of experience of HR. I can't say that. I'll be very, very honest. Yeah, I have a little. It's just my opinion. I'm not being hard on myself. But um, how many years I worked for about four, ye- four years of HR and the four years of PA and the four years of the management. But um, one of the things I can say, being as an HR, you're going to have so many, so many so many challenges, so many things that you're going to face with. Sometimes you won't be able to understand how to solve those things. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you one thing. Um, just an example uh, from my past. That, um, I, I used to handle two, uh, br- um, uh, two locations, Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Um, so in Dubai, we used to have about uh, 90 people. And in Abu Dhabi, about 70, 80 people. And then when you're not there, it's very hard to um, to handle things because you don't see them every day. And I used to travel every week, once a week uh, to Abu Dhabi. And um, so when you don't see, you're not there physically, uh, so many things get laid up on top and on top. And when you get there, you have to go, oh my God, scrap this, scrap this. And Try to make sure that everything just goes back in it um, in itself. But um, there was a situation where manager, let's say, and then employee, a sales manager and a salesperson, they had very very difficult communication um, part. I mean, they couldn't understand each other, and it's not only they couldn't understand; they didn't want to understand each other because she was thinking she's right, he was thinking he's right, and because of that. It was because of lack of communication and understanding, they created so much drama that is affected to work because he's, he says something that she doesn't want to do and she doesn't want to sell because she's upset at him because he says things and the work is getting shaky and stopped. She doesn't want to sell. He doesn't want to handle anything. So in that point, um, what I did is I put them together I put them together and I had to go through from the A to Z. What happened? How did it start? It? Why did it start? It? And how we how did the process was going and how can we end this situation? Because it doesn't help to anyone, not to them, not to the company. And sometimes it used to be very interesting that they end up when we had a conversation, they couldn't even understand where did they start it from actually. And we had to laugh sometimes saying, okay, you are guys fighting, but you didn't know what you're fighting about or 
what do you want, guys? So those type of uh, things, it's all, always good to handle through the conversation, physical conversation. You sit down with them and you talk through about whatever it, it was, it, it's being or going, and it's going to be. And it's very important for the HR to sit down and talk with each of them separately first and then speak with them together. And being as an HR, you also have to be a good secret keeper because you know about each employee. You will know their problems. You will know their issues. And if you know them well, you will know in the future the situation that they're going through. The simple example about fighting HR, um, the salesperson and manager. Me knowing well the people helped me to solve this quicker and knowing well what she is going through and why she behaves like this towards the management. Because I had to, to explain to say, you got to respect your management. He's the manager. He has more experience. And no matter what, if he's disagree he is wrong, try to find a way to to explain, to deliver your point, your opinion in a different way, because he's a different person. And so is manager to explain for the manager to say, look, she's a woman. She's quite emotional and she's going through tough times. She got she got family back home that she hasn't seen for ages. So she might just, you know, um, fired up for a second and then regret it but she can't say sorry or understand what she's done so it's like on the details depends on the situation you know but the but the main thing is just talk through it talk through it and also for you to know well your employees if you don't know your employees it's going to be even harder to solve the situation that's wonderful um, cc i have an extended question on this you know when we are talking about organizational conflicts conflicts and brad spangler speaks about win 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 lose and lose lose strategies right as being a nice um, good hr you have handled so many years of the role and um, how do you go with that when you wanted to make somebody to lose on their ground during negotiations, how do you handle that? You know, do you really insist on them to lose or you take it a little lighter? Uh, what do you mean by lose? It sounds more like closer to BTV, <laughs> right? Or like business development from the head as they do. Yeah. Well, so we are not um, dealing with machines, right? We are dealing with the human beings. So you cannot be strong on them, you know, make them lose, really feel bad about it. That's something very weird to handle, you know, I don't know how. <laughs> you know, it's, um, again, it's about, um, it's very, it's very interesting um, experience that I've experienced, to be honest, in my life. And I, I never knew uh, that you can touch the person by your even body language. Okay. It's, it's just, you know, I've learned a lot um, for, um, Talking to people, going through these challenges, um, mostly I've learned about the person to to see the right button of that person that you can just press it, and that person was just gone, you know, just melted. And it's it's about the senses of the. Uh, so when you work as an HR, it also practices your. Uh, psychological psychological parts of your sight, you know. So that means before even the person will open their mouth, you will kind of know oh, what the person is going to say. It's it's more practically in a B two B, right? When you're in meetings, you want to sell your business to business or B two G. It's it's even huge, right? It's even bigger because you're gonna um, meet up with even like shark people. He knows the business very well. He will look at you with no words to say. I'm going to work with that person or I'm not going to, right? So it's all about sensing the person and knowing well what the button you can push it. Because if you if you see the person quite emotional, right? And if you know the background of the person, you easily can find the one side to press the button and say, look, like, like the lady, yeah, when she was like, I don't know, she was on fire so badly. And um, 
uh, she couldn't control her emotions. She couldn't control her words. And one of the things I said, can we just calm down? I do understand why you're going through. No, in fact, I don't understand because I'm not wearing your shoes. But I'm here to show my empathy for you because I know you have a children that you have to look after. And if you're going to put yourself in a difficult situation, there is no one going to look after your children but your mother and you have to make sure that you provide them right education that's why you're here for let's think about that not about the person who is frustrating you because tomorrow if he's here tomorrow he's not here but you have to think about your own things first put in your head what was the reason for you from the first place to come and work here to think about your children she melted because that's true. Otherwise, she wouldn't believe her children back home with strangers or auntie or whoever and to come here just to make sure to, that the life will be better, right? And those type of things kind of makes um easier to communicate with them. They're a the toughest person that you can't even touch them. Oh, I had one person who, um, he was from India, actually. I think he was from Kashmir. And... He came as a manager in the, uh, to our company, a uh, sales manager. And it was one of the hardest, one of the difficult employees that I've ever had in my life to face with. Very arrogant, very um, selfish and confident. Yeah, he was a good person. In, in, I mean, in, in his job, he was really, really doing well, his job. But characteristically he was very arrogant rude and uh, mm, no that person and because of that he used to break up so many rules and be so disciplined that was affecting not only for the work but for the employees because everyone looking at him if you are a manager for example if you're a professor or you're a teacher everyone's going to look up to you and you're going to be an example for them so in the way you behave or teach, they're going to learn from you. So mm. those type of things used to make me feel so hard to find the burn, the bridge, I mean, to find the bridge, the, the, the break the ice. That, that it caused break the ice. So it was very hard for me to break the ice, to find a way to go into his head to say, look, we're going to be a friend. Let's be friends. Like, let's Let's do this. It was very, very hard for me. But eventually, after months, months, we we got along. <laughs> we got along. <laughs> so it's all depends perseverance. Just be persevering. Be confident, perseverant. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Yes, even HR does so many mistakes. Yeah, we <laughs> say so many things that we don't understand uh, because of uh, lack of information. We say things, we do things that we regret. But, you know, it all comes with experience. As being a HR, when you have to say no, you have to say no. You have to be confident. Absolutely. Absolutely. When we wanted to make things, but in general, we call it empathetic, empathic people, personalities. Being empathic is something important, being a HR. But in times, um, we have to go with the grounds and uh, people, and we have to be strong on our stance. Definitely, definitely. That's really that. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Sisi. It was really a wonderful insight for us, you know, for our learning. Yeah. Sometimes My we, we are always some, you know, empathic and sympathetic. We create the situations, but it doesn't go like that. Even while yeah. teaching yeah. students, we can't be with the with the word empathy and sympathy all the time. You have to be different. You have to be standing oh, yeah. on, you know, with the, with our stance. Oh. Otherwise, things are not going to happen. You have to be tough. Yeah, bit, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> it's all gonna be messy, messy. Exactly. You guys, exactly. it's really, it's really my pleasure to share a knowledge and little bit of experience that I have. Of course, there are more people who are more experienced than I am. There are more people who can give you even more insights and information than I am. Honestly, I can say that honestly. And uh, there are more people who had even more worldwide experience in HR, they can, um, you know, give you a stronger and better answers 
that you got from me. I believe that. I believe that. Uh, but whatever I had, honestly, um, from from bottom of my heart, uh, I, I've shared as much as I can. And I really hope that um, even from my thousand words, at least 10 will be very helpful to each of you uh, in the future to use them and practice them, apply them in, in your practice and to see, okay, this is how it works. Okay, this is what it is. And to gain more, to gain more skills, to gain more experience, to gain wisdom, to gain strength and uh, be more confident and strong and the most importantly, be very fair. Fair to yourself, fair to others. Good, thank you. So you see here, um, when it comes to handling people, if you're fair, honest, being rational, and but there is no, there shouldn't be any nonsense. Straightforward to handle people and situation. Otherwise, it's going to mess up the whole culture, not only that work environment, also the organizational culture. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a serious 100%. concern to look after and um, handle it properly. As being 100%. a HR, that's a typical role and a difficult role to handle it. Yeah, if one it's like kind of mess up, going. will worse everything. Yeah, absolutely. It's like um, it's like a family. I mean, I'm a mother of two, and uh, you know, only two having a two child. It feels like, oh, it's just two. No, it's a big responsibility. And even for two of them, you can't make them happy. Mm -hmm. You satisfied one, the other one will be unhappy. One will be unhappy, another one happy. It's just so hard to work to make sure in the financial part to make sure that it'll be enough for them to, to pay for the school trainings, the tennis, uh, swimming, dance or whatever. And then another part to make sure that you will educate them and uh, discipline them. That means you have to be very tough to say, Okay, I told you no, that means no, I'm not changing my mind, right? Or in other part, to be sweet and nice and understanding to show that you care for them. And in other part, also to be very responsible for them to teach that it will help them in the future to, to, to grow, you know? So with HR, I found the similarity. Um, I'm not saying like HR is a mother, but what I mean is the responsibilities, yeah? I got some similar, I can relate you know, to each other, some, some responsibilities. And it is hard. It is hard, really. You will be hated. Uh, you will be uh, dismayed. You will be betrayed. You will be unliked. You will be so many things people will do. Like, you can't satisfy everyone. They will hate you. Some of them love you. Some of them uh, respect you. Some of them uh, understand. Some of them will not understand. It, and it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Sissy. And I, I, I learned from you the word more frequently you have used being a systematic, organized, disciplined person. And you have used seven times the word responsibility. That was really mm -hmm. wonderful as being a HR. It's not an easy thing, not just taking rights on people, being responsible to people, responsible to organization is something very much to be concerned and important when it comes to human resource management or any as a business partner, you worked as a business partner or B2B business development officer and you worked in fractions, you know, like retails and so much experience you brought in. Really, really, it was a wonderful experience and happy hosting you, CC. And really, really, I'm, 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 I can't express my words the, the way you have yeah. shared your experience. Really, we are honored and um, thank you so much for your time. And we are crossing more than one hour and you have spent so much time leaving or your personal time. I know you are on your vacation and uh, in Central Asia. <laughs> and uh, you know, thank you so much for spending your time and uh, valuable insights with our students and learning. We can see that, you know, the, the, the value you have for people, whether wherever we are, whether we are in India, we are in any, any part of this world, you wanted to share and contribute to the world for people development. That is really a social contribution and the right kind of a mindset that psychology you have and ways to go. You give a lot to people and our prayers and wishes to you, CC. And thank you so much for your time. And really, really, it's amazing conversation. Pleasure meeting you and conversing with you so much. Thank you. Thankful to you. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. My pleasure. I was so happy to be uh, part of this meeting. I was so happy to be invited by you guys and uh, for you um, attentively to listen every my um, every my words or explanations. I'm honored and uh, uh, respectfully, I I can say that you are guys in a in a very good level at the moment uh, in terms of growing. So you put yourself um, in a place that you really want to know more from different uh, different uh, position. You, you see uh, your work from different angle. So that means it's very good for, for the future of the people who are starting uh, just now. That means you're trying to give even more for them, you know. And I'm very, I'm very happy. Yeah, I'm very happy. I'm Thank very you. thankful, guys. Thank you for you as well. My prayers for all of you to be blessed, uh, to be safe and uh, healthy, especially now, and uh, uh, to to grow more, to grow more in all sides. Uh, the most importantly, if you grow spiritually, emotionally, and mentally, trust me, so many things you can handle, uh, not easily, but easier. You know, so thank bless you, so you all. Thanks for the bless compliments. Thanks for the compliments, and thank you so much, CC. God bless. Bye bye. Thank God you. God bless you too. Bye, guys. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye, guys.